long time <laughs> no see Welcome back to my channel. If you're new here, welcome. My name is Darian, aka LOL Not Darian, on Instagram, Twitter, TikTok, and YouTube. Please subscribe, give me a thumbs up, and comment down below how you like this video. And this is Bailey, my cat. Today's video is about Only Murders in the Building Season 4 premiere. Bailey, 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 Bailey. I don't know if they did, I don't know if it's the fact that they had a horrible press run this time around or if it's because i haven't been on social media lately or if it's because they genuinely just did not do a good press run this time around the reason why i say all that is because i had no fucking clue that this new season had premiered until this morning <laughs> Until this morning, the episode came out last night. I had no fucking clue about it until this morning when I went to go try and download episodes of that time I was reincarnated as a slime on Hulu. And I saw that like, oh, only murders in the building, fucking season four. I'm like, what the fuck? You know, so with all that being said, let's get into this fucking episode, okay? The first scene is them wrapping up the podcast from the last season where i forgot what paul rudd's name was in the show but where pa paul rudd died or whatever and they were just talking about like they were talking about home movies i forgot how they wrapped it into the like ending of the show or whatever i loved how they had like home movies from all of them or like old videos from all of them like especially like selena gomez when she was like a little baby that was so cute that was so cute Oh, I loved that. That was so cute. They like, you know, wrap up the podcast and in the middle of Charles finishing his like last sentence or whatever, the power goes out. And that's the epiphany that I had was that the power went out because of the fucking incinerator. But we will get to that. So also for those of y'all that don't know, I'm actually a really, really huge mystery girl. <laughs> I love mysteries. I read a lot of mystery books. I watch a lot of mystery movies, watch a lot of mystery TV shows. Like some of my favorite TV shows are um, Elementary. If you guys don't know what that is, you should watch it. It's so fucking good. Um, Veronica Mars, love that show. Desperate Housewives, like I love me a good mystery. So this is like, the power goes out. We now know it was because of the incinerator. And I'm pretty sure that'll come into play later on in the, in the season, whenever they're thinking about like, you know, when did this happen or whatever, they'll re they'll remember like, oh yeah, the power went out. That's why the incinerator is out of order. It shut down the whole building or whatever, that like whole thing, right? So after they, but like back to, you know, back to the podcast, after like the power went out, it was like a power surge came back on. Charles finished his his sentence and then they went up to his apartment for like a, a celebration drink. I honestly, and I'm pretty sure everybody else was thinking this as well, I was waiting for them to come across Saz's body. Like I did not expect the killer to actually remove her body. And so I'm over here thinking like, so when are they going to like, Go, when are they going to stumble across her body especially because the first scene when they were in charles apartment charles is when they were in the apartment of charles when they were in his apartment lights were off you know and so i was i was under the impression that the lights were off and they were going to like end up stumbling over it or something like that and but then they just went on to the next scene and i'm like okay and I see the bullet hole because like at first I'm like, okay, maybe she didn't die in his apartment. Maybe like maybe I'm tripping. And then I was like, well, no, because the bullet hole is in the window. And I'm like, what? Like what? what is going on? And then something that like I feel like was a little bit because they kept dropping little Easter eggs. Right. And we'll get to that later on. But like one of the Easter eggs I kept dropping in the show or in this episode was that Mabel kept looking at the oven over and over and I think they got a little bit too ahead of themselves when it came to her looking at the oven because I get it they were foreshadowing that Saz was in the incinerator however 
there was absolutely no reason for Mabel to be skeptical of the oven. You know what I mean? And so it 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 was a little disingenuous to like just keep showing the oven. And it literally it made me think that Saz was like stuffed in the fucking oven because I'm like, you know, like why why do we keep looking at the oven? Especially because I thought that her body was still there and especially like okay so i'm sorry i'm getting ahead of myself but we'll get into that so after they drink i literally just watched the episode today so after they drink when charles was in the bed he kept hearing a whistling noise and i'm not gonna lie it was like it hurt my ears i had to turn it down but i like i couldn't understand it but now i get it obviously but that was like a foreshadowing as well Charles wakes up in his apartment and I'm waiting for him to come across the body again. Like I'm, I'm sitting there, I'm waiting for it, I'm waiting for it. It doesn't happen. And I'm like, so where is Saz's body? If he like, the lights is on, the sun is out, like it's daylight, my nigga, where is her body? <laughs> like, I am so confused, you know? Call it Oliver and Mabel come into his apartment and they're basically talking about how the play is chopped which makes sense, you know, the fucking producers just got put in prison, like, <laughs> they're not gonna be funding it, especially because the people who, who they're funding for the play is the ones who put them in fucking prison, you know, so he's like, you know, distraught about that, and then Mabel brings up Bev Mellon again, and how she brought him up, she brought the name up the night before, and they were like, that sounds fake, whatever, but then she brings it up again, and Charles admits that he also got an email and it's basically talking about Paramount Studios and how they want to fly them out for a movie opportunity. And so Oliver gets excited or whatever. Oliver is like, oh yeah, let's go to Hollywood. Let's go to Hollywood. We can get this made into a movie, da 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 Like, fuck that play, fuck that play. Hollywood money is big, let's go, baby. And Howard shows up with his dog <laughs> and he said that the shelter won't let him adopt any more cats. <laughs> and I feel like that's gonna be me at some point. Bailey, you're not going to be the only one. He called he called the dog Gravy. And I knew it had something to do with dead people because I watch with subtitles all the time, anytime, every time I watch with subtitles. I'm a huge advocate for we need subtitles in the movie theater because then maybe they could turn the fucking volume down. It'd be too motherfucking loud. But sometimes like if they're mumbling or if I don't fully catch the word, I always resort to the subtitles to tell me exactly what was said, you know? So I saw him continuously spell the name like Gravy, like, you know, Grave E. I didn't figure out that it was a cadaver dog, but I realized that it was something about dead people. I honestly, when I saw the name Gravy, I thought he was calling the dog that because of all the fucking dead people in the building and he was just trying to be like morbidly funny in that way. You see Gravy just like going fucking berserk in the apartment and <laughs> and Howard was like, oh, I, I've never known him to be like this. And Charles was like, oh really, in all of two hours? <laughs> They decide to go to Hollywood and talk to Bev Mellon about the movie. Charles keeps asking everyone, like, you know, I'm worried about Saz. I still haven't heard from her, da, da, da. And then he finally gets a text back. Oh, my bad. Had to hurry up and jet out for Bacula. And so it kind of puts his mind at ease. He's like, okay, she's at home or whatever filming. So he agrees to go with mabel and oliver to hollywood to film or to basically discuss the movie with beth mellon the next scene is them at paramount studios basically talking to the producer bev mellon that wants to make the only murders in the building movie and she starts talking to them about she starts talking to them about the movie and like her ideas for the movie and everything and she was like you know um, everybody loves Charles, the unfunny turtle, and Oliver, the person who you can't decide if you want to punch in the face or cuddle. And then she gets to Mabel and she just drags Mabel for fucking filth. Talking about how she's unemployed, she's depressed, she's, <laughs> she's broke, like just going in 
on Mabel and you can just see Mabel like slowly starting to deflate and she ends up having to leave the room or whatever. After that, Charles and Oliver follow her out of the room and they basically, you know, ask her what's going on and she's just like, I don't know, hearing her like describe me that way, it was just kind of like, damn, like, you know, I mean, I understand I'm going through it, but like, if we make this movie, that is going to be the description of me for the rest of my life. Like, that's just going to be my legacy, basically. And I completely understand that, you know, it's kind of like the same thing as just like how we don't put our downfalls on things like Instagram and Facebook and things, unless like, you know, you're just one of those people, because you don't want people's perception of you to change and you're forever just known as that train wreck and so you just you go through it by yourself or it's a thing of like you don't tell any of your friends or family about the things that you're going through because you don't want them to forever see you as this person that just can't get their shit together even if it's temporary and your family and friends will know that it's temporary you just feel like if you say it out loud then that's the truth you know what i mean and so i like i completely understand it. like she's just like Ugh. but oliver you know oliver's broke as shit so <laughs> he's like mabel i'm i'm gonna I'm hold your hand when i say this baby i understand but i need the money okay <laughs> i need the money i need you i need you to get it together because i need the money all right do you need some money They, they still, I still got the eviction notices at my door. Please, chat, please, please do this for me. So, you know, Oliver broke as he's going to do whatever he can to get, get some money in his pocket. And you know what? I agree. They get into the car with Charles's old driver when he was in Brazos. And they actually go to Saz's house to go check on her. And when Charles gets there, he's like a little uneasy. He's a little uneasy because he sees all of her mail just sitting at her doorstep. And he's like, she said that she was coming back to film Bacula. And Oliver and Mabel just kind of like reassure him, like, you know, maybe they're filming it somewhere else. You know, maybe it's not in L.A. Maybe it's, you know, in a different state or something or a different city, blah, blah, blah. So he's like, OK, all right. And he's like really... You can tell that he's just like really trying to hold on to the idea that she might be okay and that like, you know, he might just be overthinking it. And, but at the same time, he's like, he can feel in his gut that something's not right. He's like, nah, because like, she usually always texts me back like immediately with the quickness. And it's not like her to leave my texts unanswered like this, like, what's going on you know so then oliver mabel and charles are in the next scene and they are at the <clears throat> i think it's like a um like a signing party or, or a pr pr production party i can't i don't really know what it is but they're at like some party for the only murders in the building filming announcement or something like that and they end up meeting the people that will be playing them. So Charles is meeting with who is who is playing Charles? Um, Charles is being played by Eugene Liv Eugene Levy. Selena Gomez is being played by Eva Longoria. Love, love Eva Longoria. And then Oliver is being played by Zach Zach Gallage Fragilistic. <laughs> Wait, what is that man's actual name? Zach Galifianakis? Galifianakis? Zach G. They are kind of like talking to their doubles, getting getting to know them and like just like understanding their perspective on things. Mabel is talking to Eva and she's basically just like, you know, why did they age me up a little bit? And Eva was basically just like, yeah, when we did like the the stud the surveys, everyone said that it was kind of creepy that you were so much younger than the men. So they had aged me up a little bit, but you know, not that much, girl. We only like three years apart, you know. 
<laughs> I love Eva. I love Eva. She is so funny. If you don't, if you don't watch Desperate Housewives, go watch Desperate Housewives. She is phenomenal you see charles still kind of like you know worried very worried about where saz is even though like uh mabel and oliver tried their best to well his worries it still it didn't do much for him he's still like you know wondering what's going on why she's not replying to him and it's very visible even to dan he's like asking him what's what's wrong or whatever and he's just like i'm like i'm sorry like i'm just i'm really worried about my friend and he walks off right next scene is later in the night we see mabel and oliver talking and mabel and oliver are basically just talking about like why mabel is delaying everything and oliver can't understand why and it's because they both broke <laughs> they both broke they both ain't got no money coming in and so he's like look you broke i'm broke i'm chasing the bag why are you not chasing the bag like <laughs> come on now and she's really just trying to like basically explain to him like you know if i'm going to push my dignity to the side because i don't like being painted in the way that the producers are trying to paint me in i need to think it over a little bit while she's in the middle of like trying to explain that to him loretta comes up she because she actually like as soon as oliver told her like hey the play's been chopped she you know and flew to fucking uh, flew to la to start f filming another gray's anatomy spinoff so she's got that going on but she is back to see him love meryl street by the way and she's back you know to see him but they are in la right now so she's like asking him why don't have you thought about like moving here with me and you could tell that he's about to ask her to like marry him but he like kind of chickens out and he's basically just like yeah like I'll, I'll think about it basically so the next scene you see mabel and eva talking and mabel's basically just like you know i'm, I'm sorry that like i'm holding everything up i'm just still really unsure about it and eva was straight up like girl i understand they make you so pathetic in this movie <laughs> you so pathetic okay but you know i i completely understand like why you're holding off on it you know you're in a moment in your life where you don't really know what you want to do next and she basically gave mabel the idea like if you're going to allow them to paint you in this light you need to ask for a fuck ton of money so you can use that to fund something else in your life love that great advice mabel did exactly that went on over to the producer and showed her the the money or showed her how much she's asking for and she said oh. so the next scene you see charles running into the guy that plays bacula that's when he finally gets the confirmation like okay something actually is not right because at first he mistakes bacula for saz because bacula dresses exactly like how saz is like how saz dresses and so when he like you know realizes it's bacula he's like have you seen Saz and Bacula straight up goes, I was going to ask you the same thing. I haven't seen her in two weeks. She was supposed to be here last week for a pilot that we were shooting, but she never came. And Charles knows that's not like her. Bacula knows that's not like her. And so that's when he tells Oliver and Mabel, like, we have to go to Saz's apartment right now. Right now. She's not filming Bacula. He hasn't seen her in a week. Like, I don't know what's going on. So they go to her apartment and they see that she's not there, but they hear some rustling. They don't know what the fuck it is. And they see these like x-rays on her wall. And um, Mabel and Oliver are like, you know, asking like, what the fuck is that? And Charles tells them how she, how Saz is like really proud of being a stunt double to the point that she showcases all the bones that she's broken. How they get replaced with these like, I think it's iron bones or like some type of like metal bones that she gets made for her and they get made for her in Bulgaria and then she gets them shipped to America and how like they're basically indestructible. So after that, when they notice that she's not there, basically they're like looking around her apartment and everything. Mabel gets a text from Howard and he like basically says something about gravy and Mabel goes, you know you're like misspelling his name, right? And he was like, no, grave E. Like he used to be a cadaver dog. So, you know, hence the joke, gravy. And that's when she was like, oh shit. And this little nigga was going crazy in the fucking kitchen. And so after that, oh yeah, and then he sees like a bunch of 
a bunch of like little notes and things on Saz's desk. And while they're like looking at Saz's desk, Charles gets a call from Lester, the maintenance man at their building. And Lester is basically like, hey, you know, I'm so sorry. Like I got your note about needing your window repaired. I haven't been able to get around to it today, but I will get to it tomorrow. And Charles is like, my window repaired? What the fuck are you talking about? Lester tells him like, hey, it's, it's, I mean, it's like a hole, you know, in your window. I got a note from you saying that you needed it fixed. And he was like, he was like, um, no, you can even hear like the whistling noise and he puts his phone up to the window and you hear the whistling noise and Charles realizes that's what he was fucking hearing. And he was like, he asked him like, you know, is it small enough to be a bullet hole? And Lester is like, well, no, like it, it can't be, you know, he's like, uh, it, like niggas can't be getting shot up in here, you know? <laughs> And so he's like, I don't know, I don't know, but I mean, it could, but like, I, I hope not, you know? So Charles is like, do not replace the window. Don't touch the window. We will be back home shortly. So they catch the next flight back to New York. So that's the thing that the ending was perfect when they were talking about they were talking about the movie uh, Once Upon a Time in the West, the opening of it, how the entire first the entire first seven minutes of the movie is just nothing but images and sounds. That was the entire last four minutes of the episode was just a montage. And I thought it was absolutely perfectly done. However, this is what I was talking about with the stove. I felt like they were um, trying to leave entirely too many Easter eggs for us about like where Saz was and it just, it was a little disingenuous when it came to the characters, if that makes sense, because Mabel was under no impression that anything happened to Saz. She thought Saz was absolutely okay and Charles was tripping or whatever. So it made absolutely no sense for her to continue making note of the oven, to make note of it the first time and then when she's thinking over the all of the clues again, she thinks about the oven again. And then when they go back to Charles' apartment to look at his apartment, she goes straight back to the oven. It's not making sense. And then the dog barking at the oven. It wasn't making sense, mainly because it like, I understand like for us, they were trying to insinuate like she's in the incinerator and it like was all one big like you know closing of the loop for us and you know tying it up in a tidy neat bow but at the same time for them it just it it wasn't it didn't make any sense i'm gonna just say that it just it genuinely did not make any sense for them to like do it they go to his apartment they're looking again gravy and howard come and Gravy starts freaking the fuck out because once again, he smells the dead body. He takes them down to the basement. They go to their incinerator and Charles finds, or before they go to the incinerator, he texts um, whoever was texting him from Saz's phone, like, Saz is dead, who are you? Or Saz is missing, who are you? And they whenever they get to the incinerator and charles finds her bones like the the steel bones from bulgaria as soon as he finds those he gets a text from the killer and they said not your fucking friend and that was how the episode ended craziest shit ever <laughs> crazy shit ever i absolutely love the episode um like i said just that one little that one little piece my predictions of who the killer is i don't have any just yet and here's why i don't think the killer has been introduced yet i don't think whoever the character is that will end up being the killer is introduced yet i feel like they're still putting players on the board and i know usually and only and only murders history they usually have the character be introduced in the very first episode but i personally think that we won't get the character that is the killer until like the second episode because all of the characters have been kind of like 
flashes unless it's supposed to be one of the celebrities that killed them which I don't think it might I don't think it would be because they would have absolutely no reason to kill her but you know with that being said I don't think the killer has been introduced to the storyline yet when I start to suspect somebody I'll let y'all know y'all let me know who y'all think it is let me know who y'all think it is in the comments if you have any theories yet I know it's like super fucking early on <laughs> in the season but um yeah thank you guys so 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 much for watching stay tuned for next week's episode i will be here in front of my window in my chair recording for you guys hopefully with better hair who knows be safe be happy be healthy i'll see you guys next time